did a bunch of interviews around the globe um, about four years ago with CEOs, um, CXO level people, um, different industries, um, asking them about what they thought about their consumer insights in their company. And I'll read this quote um, from a CEO of a major beverage firm. Uh, he said, we don't have deep consumer insights. Because they consume the products and watch focus groups, my managers think they understand consumers. They do not. When I push them to explain a consumer insight they're excited about, they often can't. They haven't thought deeply about it. If it didn't upset me so much to see this, I might feel sorry for them. I know the person who did this interview said, I don't think that CEO could feel sorry for anyone. <laughs> but uh, it was demonstrating an employee. We could have had 20, 30 other quotes that all demonstrate this exact same idea. A lack of deep thinking, uh, a lack of deep understanding about your customers, a lack of taking the appropriate time to uh, allow for this. And this gets into what we call this depth deficit. So the insight depth deficit that we see. Uh, characterized by a few things, I'll touch on these. The first is an absence of deep thinking about research questions, about marketing strategy, about the task at hand. I'm, I'm amazed all the time how many clients of us just come to us and say, okay, doing a new, uh, we have a new product, we need to do a positioning, and this is the research we're going to do. And as you start talking to them about it, you realize they haven't thought at all. It's just they're doing what they've always done in the past. They haven't thought at all about what the issue is. And we actually slow it down often. We just did this last week, went in and spent a day working with our client. No charge to do it, just helpful to get the project in the right direction. Spent a day just talking about the issue at hand. And we came out of that meeting with a much different direction that everyone felt good about than where they would have headed if we just would have kind of done the typical, OK, that sounds good. We're ready to do this for you, and let's start moving. Um, so you need to spend time thinking about things uh, deeply. Next idea talking about a lot today, everyone will be, uh, the failure to go, go beyond surface level thinking of customers. Um, I didn't talk about that enough, I think. Uh, another one is the failure to use insights from different disciplines. Um, using uh, art therapy, using musicology, um, asking a mathematician what they think about uh, some sort of marketing strategy issue, getting different ideas from different places. Um, we, we like to use this uh, analogy that the mind isn't set up the way universities are. The English department on this side, the math department here, uh, arts and science over here, we're not set up like that in our mind. Our mind integrates all these different ways of thinking, and so you need to do that too as you're thinking about issues. Draw from other fields, um, have multiple perspectives. Our team is made up of we have neuroscientists, marketing strategy, advertising experts, <coughs> Uh, anthropologists, we kind of like this different model of having different perspectives look at things. You get better ideas that way. And the last one uh, gets back to this risk-taking notion. This is the absence of bold or imaginative thinking uh, about what turns on or engages consumers' minds. This gets back to that notion of anticipate and lead, being able to kind of take what consumers give us and then take that next step up and be able to really kind of figure out what it is that consumers uh, want out of an experience. To do this, I'm going to switch over now to talk about a solution uh, for this depth deficit. And I'll also ask, too, uh, if, you, if you're thinking, if your company, your corporate culture has this depth deficit issue, um, I'll ask you how many, of your, uh, how many of you would send your children to a school that encouraged the same learning behaviors, learning environment that your, that your uh, company did? And probably not many of you, right? Uh, Wall Street doesn't reward this kind of thinking. Wall Street's all about short-term gains. Um, they don't reward long-term thinking. CEOs generally don't say, you know, close your door for the week and just kind of think about consumers, right? You have meetings stacked upon meetings stacked upon meeting right after nine to five straight meetings, then you go and check your emails from five to seven uh, at night. You go eat dinner and you go to bed and wake up and do the same thing again. How can you possibly be getting deep insights or thinking deeply about issues? Uh, not all of that, again, is in our control. Uh, some of that you're not going to change the way Wall Street evaluates, evaluates the companies you work for. Um, but some of it is, and I think some of it comes through maybe uh, incorporating some of these philosophies and how you think about consumers, um, and also just maybe trying to find a two-hour window during the week that you just make sure you just kind of allow that time for ideas to percolate. Um, so metaphors. I'm going to ask you to imagine in your mind's eye a whale, okay? And as you do that, you are probably not imagining a Wikipedia or encyclopedia entry like this, correct? You're imagining something like this. Hopefully not this exact whale. That would be kind of freaky. But the idea here is you're imagining a whale in your mind. It's why we call it the mind's eye, right? Our mind thinks through images. It's the way we are actually envision different experiences. If I ask you to think of the last cultural event you went to, Akron football game, symphony, it doesn't matter. 
you actually imagine that experience in your mind. You're not thinking about it like a monitor with uh, words going across it. The problem is most research that we do asks consumers in their own words to articulate what that experience is about. What is it like to use an iPhone? What is it like to uh, own a Mercedes? We're asking consumers to articulate through words something that just cannot do an adequate degree of justice to what's really going on in their mind. Um, you'll see one way to we, we try to account for that in our research is to ask consumers to think more metaphorically. Get into that in a moment. Um, why metaphor? Uh, I can spend 10 hours talking about this. I'll give the 10-minute uh, version of it now. Um, but metaphor is really the basic way that all humans function throughout the world. It's a way we express, articulate ideas to other people. Uh, it's a way that we frame experiences. I've never presented at University of Akron before, but I've presented at other conferences before, so my mind draws up. It's a form of categorization. My mind draws up past conferences, and I say, OK, I bet you I'm going to be standing in front of people. I'll have a microphone in my hand, and people will be in front of me laid out at tables. I kind of have this idea ahead of, uh, ahead of myself that kind of allows me to start to envision what that experience is going to be like. So I don't, think, I don't talk about metaphor in the literary sense, although that is. I talk about it in a very broad sense, um, X experience like Y. We talk about three levels of metaphor. Um, you can think of this here as a uh, metaphor for the uh, brain, again, this 95, or this 5% or 15% of conscious level thought. Um, and then getting down into more of the unconscious thought pro processes here. So we talk about surface metaphors being these metaphors that reside in everyday, uh, everyday uh, talk. So in Western languages, we use about five to six metaphors per minute in our conversations. One of the curses, to use another metaphor that you won't be able to get out of today, is you'll be hearing metaphors the rest of the day, and uh, maybe longer if you, if you ever work with us. But we use five to six metaphors per minute in Western languages. Some other languages are even more than that. But we say things like, you know, um, flew across town today, I'm dragging, I feel blue, I feel down, um, my home's my cocoon, uh, living, with, you know, living with debt is a heavy cross to bear. We use these all the time because they're very simple ways to communicate what is actually quite a complex idea. So if I say something like, and you'll hear our moderators in our interviews, they're sort of trained to capture these metaphors, explore the meaning behind them for clients, and get into some of these deeper frames. I'll give you some actual practical examples of this coming up. But um, when you, what we'll do is you'll often hear if someone says, you know, living with debt is a heavy cross to bear, our moderator will stop and say, hey, you just mentioned that it's a heavy cross to bear. What does that cross represent? Why are you bearing that cross? How does it feel to bear that cross? How would it feel to have that cross removed? And if you're a financial service company helping you know, uh, help someone get out of their debt, those are, again, very important ideas to know about. Fear, frustration, anxiety of having this burden, and then anticipation or hope of what it might be like um, if you could get this removed. And so um, just asking these very simple questions about these surface metaphors that we use all the time to describe experiences in our life can get up some deeper emotions, deeper frames. And these are what some of these frames are. Metaphor themes, I'll show you through examples. Um, this is where strategy often lies. Uh, deep metaphors is what I'll talk about first and then kind of re revisit this model.